All right, hello world. This is Kim. Welcome to Old Noir War Gamer Plays Dawn of Man. Um, yeah, I've uh, I just recently purchased this game. And I'm not gonna wait. Confirm you have not completed the tutorial. Unless you really know what you're doing, we highly recommend that you do so. You want to play the tutorial now? Yes, I would because this is the first time I'm playing the game. I am sorry, welcome to the longest uh, loading screen you will ever see. Um, hopefully in future uh, episodes, I will just be, uh, I'll start recording as soon as the game loads and save you this, 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 this. Gather berries and fruit during summer and save longer lasting resources such as cured meat, dry fish, and grain for winter. <coughs> uh, yeah, uh, like, uh, like foundation, I have been eyeing Dawn of Man for quite some time. Now, I've been looking forward to playing this game. I've seen some playthroughs on YouTube and I want to see if I can uh, uh, do well uh, by myself. Um, I'm playing on a like an old laptop. That's why it's like really really slow. Press any key. Yes sir. So it's WASD. Welcome to Dawn of Man. In the game you control a band of ancient humans striving for survival. This tutorial explains the basics. You can check the in-game help for more advanced directions. So let's uh, learn the game. Now what? Camera controls. Not a man uses FPS style camera controls. Move the camera using the Wasad keys. Rotate the camera using Q and E. Zoom using the mouse wheel. Wasad Q and E. Mouse wheel. Cool. Well done. Note, you can pivot the camera around a point by rotating and panning at the same time. You can check out the more advanced controls in the help section and customize the keys in the settings menu. So you can do this. Wait. Fishing. People will need a constant supply of food to stay alive. The more we, one of the more predictable sources of food is fish from rivers and lakes. Send people to fish, select the river, and click on the fish button. To send people to fish, select a river. Select that river. Clicking on this button. Send someone to... Well done! In general, you can assign tasks to your people by selecting objects like trees, rivers, animals, structures. Choosing one of the options in the selection panel. Okay. Next, you should be gathering some basic instruction and crafting materials like sticks and flint. Uh, sticks and flint. Sure. Gather that. Gather that. Cool. Wait for your people to get one unit of raw fish, sticks and flint. Use button or press 4. To get game speed to eight, use button on what? What is this? What is this? Sword chart, food chart, defense, speed, speed. Aha! I found it. So some people are just doing nothing. Well done! You now know how to assign tasks to your people. This is a good way of micromanaging them. But it's not. Too much micromanagement is tedious and inefficient. Work areas are all or work areas are a way to give general commands to your settlement that people will perform continuously. Specify location or resource limit and the number of people performing the action at one given time. Place a fish work area. Mm. 
is this not a fish work area um, pausing work area what do you mean I'm clicking right clicking nothing Suck. Work area general resources, group resources, transport animals, speed defense, straw chart. It's the same banana, only on the other side. Awesome, schmasam. <gasps> what did I do? No. No. Oh no. Okay. I'm messing it up. Oh. Uh, place a fish work area. How? Oh crap. There. Place work area. Fish. How about here? Work area, gather sticks, use shift click Z and C. Oh, oh, okay. There, work area, harvest and collect wild plants. This one, there. Yeah. And what's this? Obtain flint. There. Work areas by default only one person at a time will go to any given work area, but you can increase this if required. Allow three workers to gather in sticks. Three. And two on this one. All right, cool. Use uh, game speed eight. Let's go, workers. Completed. Yeah, well done. Your people will now continuously gather resources until the limit is reached. Note that berries can only be gathered in summer. Other resources in the game can only be gathered in a particular season. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Crafting. Now that you have some raw resources, let's craft some hunting tools with them. The main crafting structure in the Stone Age is the crafter. To build one, select the build option in the main menu, then the production button, then the crafter structure. So, build, production, crafter. Oh. Huh. Huh, I see. Press button for waiting for people to build it. Really? Okay. We'll wait then. Oh, look. Some dude is build, putting stuff. And okay. Alright. Oh, oh, uh huh. Whoa. Eagle flying overhead. They are building. The crafter structure acquired flint times 10 knowledge plus one. First structure, what the what? To craft tools, select the crafter, then click on a tool recipe. The crafting task will be added to the queue, and one of your people will perform it as soon as they can. Let's craft some wooden spears on animals and some by faces to butcher them. Okie dokie, let's click on that. Let's click on this, and then this. Is that it? Three by faces and three wooden spears. Oh, ho, ho, ho. and we wait again. Blah blah blah. Where do they put it after they're done with it? Those are resources. Awesome. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right, right, so somebody's cooking something. It's a kid. 
the mob, little boy. What are you doing? What is this? What is this? What happened? Ah! Did the game crash? No! What did I do? Oh no. Oh no. No. Really. Are you really going to do this today? Please no. Oh no. Hey, it did not crash. Well done, we now have all the tools we need to go hunting. <laughs> hunting was a tricky business in the Stone Age. Killing a large animal with sticks and stones was no easy feat. Use primal vision to find easy prey, highlighted in green. Avoid large animals and carnivores until we have the right tools and the manpower. Plant an animal, select it, and click on the hunting button. Primal vision. Look at that. Primal vision. Uh, wild donkey. Sorry, Mouflon. You need to be hunted too. Wait for your people to hunt an animal. Oh, what are you doing? Oh! Well, well done. Once the animal has been hunted, your people will butcher it. Bring the resources to camp. In hunting in this manner, your people will decide how many of them to send, based on the difficulty of the prey. Unless you micromanage your crap. Micromanage, speaking of, sometimes you want, you might want more control over your people's actions. You can do this selecting a few people, then right-clicking on the terrain or target. So you can move around or assign one or more individuals a particular task. Especially useful for hunting at the beginning of the game when resources and manpower are limited. Huh, I won't. <laughs> Send two people to hunt the same animal. Select them and right click on the animal. Select two people. Two people, you. And who else? Who else? Who else can hunt? You. And then let's hunt this one. Look, a wild boar. That's scary. Did I? Well done, you can check out the help game. Yada yada yada. Um, skins, one of the few resources to obtain. You obtain from animals raw skins. They're used to craft clothing, build structures, among other things. However, raw skins cannot be used directly. You have to dry them first. In order to do this, you need to build skins dryers. Place two skins dryers. Sure. Um, how about here? construction. I can't. Really? Okay. Sure. Alright. You're just building stuff. Uh, one of the things I like about this game is that it allows for not micromanaging. <laughs> I dislike micromanaging. I just want to see the ant farm move by its own accord. <coughs> Waiting for your people to dry two skins. Cool. Uh, all the 
pigs gone from this area. Can I move it? I can't. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. What do you want me to do? Well done. Always keep a stock of dry skins as they are a fundamental building and crafting material in the early eras. Of course. In the game, you, you earn knowledge points in doing certain actions, hunting new animals, gathering new resources, reaching certain population levels, etc. You can then use them to research a new text, which unlock new structures, plants, or mechanics. Cool. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> uh, the food drink tech unlocks the food dryer, which allows you to process raw meat, raw fish into cured meat and dry fish. These last for a long, lot longer and can be stored for the winter in a safe place. Use open text panel by using the is this the tech panel? How do I access the tech panel? <coughs> <coughs> oh there it is. Tech panel. Click to unlock. Already unlocked. Who the drawing unlocked? Food drying. Yay, yay, yay. Last construction of the food dryer where you can produce cured meat and dry fish, which are the only long lasting foods available in the Paleolithic. Makes a sense to place a food dryer in the storage tent. I see. Storage. Storage tent. Um. Sure. And a food dryer. Huh. Okay, the game really likes you to move at speed eight, huh? Sure, let's see it. Producing the thingy. First structure, storage tent, knowledge this one. Uh, okay, this guy is like uh, uh, shaping the sticks. Food dryer, I have now no more sticks. I believe. Look at them go. Oh, child labor. <laughs> Let's go, people. Produce them cured meat and dry fish. Rah. And this structure is like they're dumping all oh, resources, decayed berries. Why did you not move it into the storage hut? Crazy. Oh well. Where? waiting for well done remember to always dry your food and keep it in a storage structure preserve it as long as possible next continuous production manually producing every item is tedious and inefficient you can right click on a recipe to toggle continuous production your people will then keep on producing the item until the resources resource limit is reached so we will right click on this Well done, your people will now continue to produce. You will now continuously produce the tools until the resource limit is reached. Note that some recipes are set to continuous production by default. Like what? Like that. Expansion. If everyone is well fed and taken care of, 
settlement will reach a high level of welfare and prestige. More people will want to join it. New people to join the village, you will have to build enough residence buildings to accommodate the needy population. Otherwise, they will not come. Oh, you have to build them the new hutty things. All right. Residence. Aha. Well. Sure. Just build one here. more here and you want eight of course you want eight wait for your people to build the tents I'm waiting look at them go build those tents why don't you I am looking at my resources they are okay I think you run out of stuff or it uses it up when you hunt. New humans will now join your settlement. Note that your settlement can also grow when your people reproduce. This plays a more important role when you reach larger, po larger populations as you can have a large number of birds. Okay. Okay. Well done. You now know the basics on how to run settlement. Note, there are quite a few other mechanics in the game that are not explained here. You can get more info on the loading screen hints, UI tooltips, and in, yeah, or in the in-game help menu. That explains all the concepts in the game with a lot more detail. Do I really want to read through all of that? Probably not. Whoa! They booted me out! I guess so. Uh, it is time to... <laughs> end the episode there I guess and then we will start a new one on the next episode for Dawn of Man I guess that's it for this one I will see you in the next one kick ass with honor game with glory I am out peace